and minimalists. This podcast has bad words. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are the Minimalists. Uh, before we get started, happy birthday to Podcast Yeah, Sean. man. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Can we get a little camera on, Sean? <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Podcast Sean. Podcast Sean. Sean. Happy birthday to you. Sorry, I can't carry Melody with you. You, you, you did a great it. job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was letting you go. That was strong. <laughs> and Podcast Sean, you're an Aries. Is today your actual day? No, no, no. The day this comes out. Yeah. Oh, how awesome of yeah. 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 Taurus. Taurus. Ford Taurus. <laughs> Edit. He is sort of the Ford Taurus of podcasting. I don't know if that's a compliment. I mean, it's a compliment in the sense of like, he, he just puts his head down and goes, goes, goes. There's no stopping him. But right. when his cattle... When his catalytic converter breaks, it's all downhill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that voice you hear with us today, if you're just listening to this and not watching it, is Matt Nathanson. We're going to talk about sadness today, and who better to talk about sadness with oh my God. than Matt Nathanson? <laughs> the, the topic today, so we, we tend to tackle, tackle one topic. We don't do interviews. We just answer questions. People like call in for some reason. They ask our advice for yeah. stuff, and uh, we maunder on until we... we cobble together an answer for people mm. but uh i wanted to talk to you about sort of success and sadness and whether success leads to happiness whether happiness leads to sadness whether sadness leads to happiness <laughs> and we have all the puzzle pieces on the table oh, yes mm. we'll, we'll figure Man. all that out now look what i have also here on the table it is something called a compact disc. Are you familiar with these? Yes, those ha those back in the uh, back in the eighteen hundreds. Those were those stopped the plague. I back in, the in my odds. village, <laughs> they stopped the plague in your village. <laughs> I I stopped listening to them in the late oddies. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, uh, we've been doing this thing called Screenless Saturdays, and uh, for a while. Um, I was doing completely screenless, so no phone at all. And my wife and I, we would just like drive around, get lost in Los Angeles because you're like, oh, I don't have GPS now. What am I going to do? Yeah. And so we went over to uh, Amoeba Music and I found your CD literally the day after it came out, which I was just shocked about. I thought I was just going to have like my pick between like Third Eye Blind and like David Gray's White Ladder or something. But uh, those are so CDs. <laughs> no, you just named two quintessential CDs. Yes, I love it. Have. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I did buy the White Ladder album the same day. I bought two albums. I bought Matt Nathanson sings his sad heart, which is his new album. You can check it out everywhere. And um, well, here's the thing, Matt. You, your music is like a book report on sadness. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I like it, but but I feel like like it's it's like sprinkled to use a mixed metaphor here. Yes, uh, with with hope. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, totally some mad agree. hope, one yeah. might say. Uh, right? Stop it, you. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> yeah, you got to have hope, or it's all it's all bad, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't believe that it can get better or that you can get better, mm -hmm. it's yeah. uh, all downhill. But yeah, definitely a lot of sadness. I don't know what the deal, I mean, I know what the deal is, but I thought I got to the bottom of it in therapy. I spent so much money in therapy. You know? <laughs> and then I was going to make a record that was going to be like all anthems. I was like, people are unempowered and they need to feel powerful. I'm going to make the record to do that. And then I started recording this record, writing songs. And the first one was like, why'd you leave me? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's just one, just the de that's debris in the way of the empowering anthem. Let's go. And then the second one was like, don't go. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and by like song 13, I was like, I think we have a thread here. I think I have not gotten to the bottom of my well. Oh, yeah. wait, I think the, the second song on this album is uh, way, way back. And, and it, it's like the... I, I wish that it would have been the opening song because it's like the best opening line to an album. Oh, yeah. I feel like, That's great. Um, uh, uh, last, what is it, the last flare from the lifeboat? Yeah, and and it's like it says so much. You know, Sean and I were just talking about this before we started recording. Um, how a lot of the best stories or best songs, like all of the action is sort of taking place to the right of the frame, but you're alluding to everything that's sort of happening there, uh, yeah. happening there. And so, last flare from from uh, the lifeboat is is that just says so much. And then you you start to unpack it quite a bit throughout throughout the song. But I I I, uh, I wrote a 
a review of this album uh, at the end of each year we put out a list of like our favorite albums from from the previous year and so uh, for 2018 this was definitely on the list oh, and i do like a little one one line review and and the thing that i said is it's upbeat sad songs about heartbreak in the rear view and i think i think part of that is sadness says something about what's going on like what what already happened and it, like it got us to this this point so it's in the rear view but somehow you've you've taken this topic and you've you've made it upbeat there's this sort of upbeat sadness can you can you talk a little bit about that yeah i feel like i feel like musically i'm a big fan of when some I, i'm a super big fan of like sad sad right when when connor oberst writes a song that just mm -hmm. sounds sad and it is sad yeah i'm are, super are you a fitzgerald fan uh ella or or um what, who, who, William Fitzsimmons? Yeah, Fitzsimmons. That's what oh. I'm. Mean, Fitzsimmons. Oh, William Fitzsimmons. Yeah, William Fitzsimmons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's sad, sad. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, right. When William is sad, like that's what I'm saying. So I, I respect and love the sad, sad for sure. <laughs> but for me, um, it's a, a very weird example. But I remember the Gin Blossoms way back in the day put out their first record, and they had this lyric that was in my favorite song, and I and and it was called Lo Lost Horizons, and I didn't really know the lyrics. But the song was super poppy, and I'd sing it while I was driving. And the lyric was, she had nothing left to say, so she said she loved me. And I stood there grateful for the lie. Yeah, you, dr you drink enough of anything to make this world look new again. Mm. You know, and I was like, whoa. And I was like, and I was like, that is the way to do it. If you can deliver something that feels one way, but if you unpack it, it feels like three or four layers deeper. Like to me, that's... That's like a, that's the kind of music I really like mm. to dig into. And so, uh, yeah, being, me being sad, like we need another straight white man being sad on album. Like we need to be <laughs> like, like kicked in the, in the, in the balls as a big group. You know what I mean? Like you do it really well, man. You got to do it. Dude, you got to dig in. You got to dig in. But like people like Connor Oberst, William Fitzsimmons, those people do sadness mm. really well in a, a, in a way Leonard Cohen did sort of he was not as sad but like there was a, there was a thing you went to Leonard Cohen to get a certain thing and for me I, I just like a little bit more yeah a little bit more sugar with my medicine essentially yeah yeah it's fun I, I think uh, and also melodies are so like pop I, I always think that the best music for me again I like all music but for me the things that really stand the test of time are things where this sort of commerce and art come together in this way, mm -hmm. right? Like to me, Boys of Summer by Don Henley is one of the best songs in the world mm -hmm. because it does this incredible balance of like, you don't have to tune into what's going on in that song to enjoy it. But if you decide you want to sort of like dig in, you have, you can, I mean, unpack it for days. Yeah. And, and you do that, you have certain lyrics. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about some of those in a bit, but I wanna dive into some questions here. We have some questions from our audience about sadness. The first one is from Jessica in Seattle. Basically, long and short is the reason I'm calling is I just, I feel like you guys get me and where I'm at. Um, I've gone through living in a broken home and abusive relationships and, Working a corporate job 19 years almost, I just turned 35, I helped take care of my father, trying to live a healthy lifestyle, go to the gym regularly, do meal planning for myself and my father, and it, it, I never have enough time to step away and remove the anchors, my job is the biggest thing, to figure out what I want to do with my life career-wise. Um, I want to find what I'm passionate about and I don't know how. I get caught up in the whirlwind of the work week and I'm pulled in so many directions. I just let it happen. Um, I was recently told by a psychic that I'm lazy when it comes to myself and I got very mad because I was kickboxing 21 days in a row. I said, I'm not a lazy person and she said, I mean in regards to yourself. I need to figure out how to not feel selfish and take the time to figure out what I'm passionate about and apply myself towards that because I know if I take care of myself, I can take care of the people I love around me. Um, and yeah, I, I'm hoping that you guys can help me with that. Matt, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> that was a doozy. That was, uh, that was uh, I mean. Jessica in Seattle has. Jessica, uh, sweet Jessica. I, I have, uh, you know, it's difficult giving someone feedback on their life in such a short you know, we just got a burst of her experience. But my yeah. first red flag was like, she wants to take care of other people. Don't take care of anybody. Yeah. I think if you want, I mean, like, take care of yourself. But yeah. it's like, no matter what, it's like, I get that 
humans need each other. And I get that it's your job to, and especially family, people want to be able to sort of take care of family, but like, it's all about, you can't take care of anybody if you're not taking care of yourself. And if you're giving all your energy externally to try and like help people, which is what she said a couple different times. Yeah. And then also the second red flag was like, take no advice from fucking psychics. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, or at least take it with a grain of salt. Oh, take <laughs> it like, yeah. I mean, if it rings true to you, but the problem is, is like, yeah. it's like anything. It's like any peer <clears throat> feedback. It's like, People don't know. They're just proje even psychics. I mean, they're just projecting their own experience. I guess psychics aren't in theory, but it's like that's a lot. There's a lot of weight. Oh my god! I wish that she would just shed like almost all of that. Yeah. Like fu fuck taking care of other people. Fuck going to kickboxing 21 days in a row. Am I allowed to say the f word? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like I just did, didn't I? I owe my kid like 75 cents right now. Here's the, the best part is uh, Ella, my my five year old daughter. She has a little drop at the beginning whenever we 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 say bad oh words. Oh my god, yeah, she, I've heard it. It's yeah, the she best. Says, yes. She says, yeah, this podcast is bad words. <laughs> so yesterday I was I was at a bookstore buying a book, uh, uh, a poetry collection. I'm not a big poetry reader, but there was it just hit me, and, and we'll talk about it in a bit. Wow. But I walked out with the book in my hand and this woman uh walks up to me and she said um where do you get your hair colored <laughs> where do you i've never asked you that where do you get your hair I, colored I josh said, the sun <laughs> <laughs> and, and she goes oh well my brother's been thinking about uh getting his hair colored and i was just wondering if you knew of a good place i'm like no i wh why would you say that she goes well anyway here's my card i'm a psychic and and uh, I just wow. I've got I've got this. <laughs> did you tell I've got her this that she should have known? Your intuition you was didn't. wrong. <laughs> You're like you. You were way off. Like, <laughs> I'm like you know I'm gonna throw this away then, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's good, man. Oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, oh but, my but gosh. For, for Jessica, the the thing that I will so say Jessica. is I I agree with with what Matt was saying here 100%. is uh, with respect to she, she's worried about being selfish, and so she tries to give to everyone else as 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 a result. But self care is self interest interested but it's not selfish it's actually the opposite because if you're not taking care of yourself you don't have anything to give to everyone else or what you are giving them is broken and who wants who wants all the broken pieces we, yeah yeah we have a real upside down view of selfishness in, in, in our country and the idea that like yeah, self-care is a great way to put it but it's like you have to be the center of your universe and you have to treat yourself with love and respect and empathy and kindness and you have to know that you are a limited person on an ever-evolving curve of like soaking in knowledge and it's like even from just that little bit like i wish she was here because i feel like i want to crack open i feel like she's carrying this all this weight with her yeah. you know forward and that just makes it life is hard enough when you have to battle your own brain but when you then have to sort of add on all these pieces mm. that like make it feel like you your, your backpack is full of other people's stuff mm, you know what yeah. i mean it's like hey but so yeah that well i i think what happens like when we start to carry all this weight we fall into the busy trap. And that's where Jessica is. If we stay busy, because she's not she's not lazy. She's very, very busy. But the problem is, is if you're not busy about the right things, well, then that is like a perfect recipe for discontent. I mean, you know, putting all your energy into other people and, and just constantly worrying about how's your well-being, Matt? How's your well-being, Josh? Jordan, Sean, how's your well-being? And, and I'm just focused on everyone else. Ostensibly, like that's a really good distraction from what's going in, uh, what's going on on the inside. But a distraction is still a distraction. Yeah, yeah, it definitely and, is. And so, I mean, she's doing a great job of distracting herself right now from what she really needs to deal with. And like the first thing I would I would tell uh, Jessica is, you know, you've you've got to be able. And I know this sounds kind of like Brene Brownish, but like you got to a give yourself permission to like to to have some self care time, mm -hmm. and you've you've got to like give yourself permission to like feel uncomfortable when you're dealing with yourself. Because what happens when you become alone with yourself, you start to crack open some things that you didn't really realize that were there mm. now i think while she's going through this like uncomfortable time i mean matt you mentioned you did a lot of therapy i i do therapy every once in a while i know josh does therapy every once in a while mm -hmm. um it's really helpful to have someone in the room that oh, can yeah. help unpack all of this trauma like these traumatic experiences that jessica says she's been through maybe she hasn't dealt with those perfectly just yet so find someone or find you know a community of people who are going to support you i mean that could be like the rotary club it could be church. It could be uh, uh, what else? Do I have written. I have a couple other written down here too. Um, it could be the local organic farming association. I mean, I'm just trying to bring up random things because I think when we try to take on 
all of this trauma by ourselves, it's very, very difficult. So uh, yes, finding like a therapist to talk to, finding a group of people for support, like this is going to help her unpack it a little bit more. Well, yeah, and the, and the other thing is she said, it's like the brain really only needs to be used like 9% of the time. And she's saying... I'm in this job and I just don't know what my passion is. And it's like, your job doesn't have to be your passion. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like your job can facilitate your passion mm. and you don't have to, it doesn't have to be as hard as we, we make it so hard a lot of the time. And we make like the uh, things that should just sort of flow through us, but we have these weight and expectation but, you know, th where like my job has to be my passion. This has to be what I love. Mm. And it's like, no, dude, it can just make you money. Yeah, and, and then you can go, okay. yeah, you, yeah. You, you can go for hikes. That. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> but also the, the term find your passion is, is misused because you don't f just stumble across this thing like, oh, wow, I opened the door and there it was. I found it. No, passions are cultivated. I, I, someone on Twitter was asking me about this just the other day. And I'm, I'm like, you actually have to cultivate the passion, but, but I can't find anything I'm good at. Well, you're bad at everything until you get good at it. Yeah. You probably didn't pick up the guitar. The oh, Hell, he probably did. He's talented no, at a I bunch of stuff. He's born with the guitar. He, I'm yeah. He's born with the ukulele. Every <laughs> week, I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta, I don't know what. I gotta go into dance. I gotta go into the art of dance. I gotta get rid of this guitar. <laughs> I only knew three chords when I was six weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny oh, that shoot. yeah people put a lot of that was a I, I wish she had been here I felt like I felt there, there was a lot of things of like you know we put so much emphasis on like you have to figure out who you are and it's like mm -hmm. you figure out who you are when you as you're going and it evolves and it changes and there's yeah. no set thing you know and it's like we're we're all just sort of heading towards hopefully being more wide open and enlightened than we were when we then when we were when we started and then we got kind of slammed shut and so it's like to uh, she'll figure it out but yeah well i i feel like with when it comes to passion we i know i fell into this trap of like passion equaling happiness and like that is it's a misnomer because there's a lot of peaks and there's a lot of valleys when it comes to chasing a passion and i think right now jessica is looking at oh if i could just find what i'm passionate about then that's going to fix all of my problems. It'll get rid of my sadness. But the truth is, is I feel like, and if I'm way off guys, like, let me know, but I feel like you've got to, she has to do this self care first. She has to take care of her problems first before she can really dive into a passion, which again, I think if she did that right now, it's just another distraction. Well, speaking, speaking of problems, she said she wants to get rid of some of the anchors in her life. And I think unfortunately what's, what happens here is she's actually adding anchors on because I want to start tackling other pe other people's problems, right? Well, it's all how you view it, too. This is the part that's so fascinating about humans is like uh, one person's anchor is another person's sort of wings, and it's like right. if you decide you... if, if it, it comes down to the more bandwidth you can allow yourself to love yourself and have empathy and kindness for yourself, the more you're able to see things less as a burden and more as just what it is, which is just information coming at you that you can then sort of interpret through your through your lens and it can be an anchor if you want it if you create it to be an anchor mm -hmm. it can be something completely different if you decide to see it that way yeah. and it's like humans when you're tapped and when you feel like listening to her even just her voice you know she I, and I went to kickboxing 21 days in a row I'm not lazy and and it's like it's like Jesus you don't have any there's no space in there to breathe mm. there's no space in there to just be like and because that's the only way to see things. I, I, I think about it a lot when I go on social media and I'll see people being like, it's the end of the world. This is the, I mean, it is the end of the world. Right. And it's like, dude, I can't live that way. You might be no. able to, and, and I don't know if you can or can't, but <laughs> it's like, you gotta, I, I don't want to walk around my whole life believing that. And I also don't want to think I'm an idiot because I don't believe it, mm. which is the other thing. You think it makes you sharp when you're vigilant and you see all the, all the you're vigilant about what's gonna come what's gonna happen what's gonna happen what's gonna attack me what right. and you're readying yourself that's just like no way to live your life you have no bandwidth no. for for like the sweetness Dude, and then I, you're yeah i was i was raised jehovah's witness and like they are big like doomsday end of times they've been they've been screaming the end of the world since over a hundred years and it's like i i mean i'm so glad i got out of it because like now it's almost like when i was in it I was told that my life truly hadn't begun yet. And so like, so instead I'm like waiting for the end of the world. So then my life can truly begin. But like when I kind of let go, lyric right there. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us. We're, just, we're writing a song right now. But it's like, as soon as I was able to let go of like, Oh, 
like the end of the world, a probably Armageddon as it's you know written and 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 interpreted through many religions probably isn't going to happen. Pr- definitely or not definitely, but probably not in my lifetime. Probably not ever going to happen. And once I accepted that, it was like, oh, now I can truly kind of play around with life. Like I can truly live instead of waiting for the day when I can start to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if Armageddon is coming, I'm certainly not going to be able to stop it by being bummed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's like, I, I, I want to fucking, I want to get in the shower and I want to be in the shower. I want to like feel what yeah. the water feels like and I want to be psyched. When I go to bed at night and I hold my wife, I want to hold her and be focused and be there and be present. When I eat a fucking burrito, I want to be like focused on the burrito. I don't want to be like thinking about how bad everything is mm-hmm. because then it it steals the joy from, and this is the what you're talking about, about this idea that we do these minutia things that we put in our way that make us feel like we're accomplishing things. And it doesn't, it, all it does is burn us out on the stuff that matters, which is like, and this is super hippie, but like the universe and the flow of energy in the universe. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can't control any, the only thing you can control is your perception of things. You can't control anything else. It's interesting. I think we hold on to the the idea of end times, the idea of it's the end of the world is because that gives us a feeling of control. Of course. I yeah. mean, it, it's, it's yes. a, it is a control mechanism, but when you do that, I mean, you're just, you're seeding discontent. You're going to reap discontent. Well, then you also manifest, which is crazy, which I never believe, <laughs> but you manifest shitty things yeah. when you think shitty things, yeah. and you manifest beautiful things when you think beautiful things. Yeah, it's, uh, there, there's an actual phenomenon, like when, if you buy, you know, a Toyota Corolla, then all of a sudden you start seeing all the other Toyota yeah, 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 Corollas yeah, yeah. that are on the yes. road. Right. It's the same thing with our, with our thoughts, and yeah. you know, I, what I hear from you, I, I don't know whether or not you meditate, but you're speaking like someone who does. Uh, I, I don't know if I, it, I journal, but okay. I don't meditate, but I journal, which is sort of meditative, yeah. yeah. And, and so in terms of like how we how we interpret the experience in front of us in fact that word anchor is interpreted often two completely of different ways like mm. uh, back in the corporate days people would say ryan you're such an anchored person I'm like, yes i am look at me i'm yes. so anchored yes and, <laughs> and then afterward it was like oh man i've got all these anchors and they're keeping me from the thing a boat is supposed to do which is like go out at sea and explore and be free and mm. so even even there there's this dichotomy of the anchored person is also an anchored person totally yeah totally. i want to give one last piece of advice to jessica because you talked about journey journaling and how it's a meditative experience jessica find a meditative experience for yourself like whether it's actually doing a meditation app i uh, mariah and i we just started we're on day three it'll be today of the sam harris waking up meditation app yeah you're right dude like even the first josh is like you got to try this meditation app and i've tried so many meditation apps and they're not horrible but they're like never have i connected with one where i'm like this is the one until Sam Harris is waking up. I'm like, oh my God, this is the one. <laughs> but whether it is like doing something like that or whether it's journaling, I mean, yeah, find something. Or kickboxing, but not m- making it about exercise. Yeah. Like that's the other thing is we take, you know, exercise in general is meditative if you can do it without seeing that there has to be an end result, right? right? Like I got to be fit or I've got to get this. Just like beating the shit out of something is incredibly meditative. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and so like, it's like she could, that could be her meditative place. Yeah. But you, it's about clearing the brain because the brain sucks. And the brain like is literally like a Gatling gun or like a sledgehammer. Like you never use it to build a house. You need it just like for one very specific problem solving <laughs> thing. And it's like, but people are like, you show up and you're like, How, what tools do you have? Let's put up this window. And someone's like, I've got a sledgehammer. You know, and you're like, that's where that's not going to work. And they're like, sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like how it works with people. It's yeah. crazy. It's so, <laughs> Jessica, I'm going to send you a copy of our book, Essential. It's an essay collection with 150 different essays about intentional living. There's a whole chapter in there. There's 12 different chapters about, oh, well, there's 12 chapters about intentional living, but there's one chapter about priorities. And I think that's one thing that you're going to have to figure out. What are your real priorities versus what are the pacifiers that are in the way? Ryan, I think we got time for one lightning round question. What do you got for us? All right, we got one lightning round question from Michelle. She writes in, do you find that you combat sadness differently as minimalists? Or maybe I would say for Matt as a musician. So during lightning round, this is what we try to do, Matt. We try to give a, a pithy, less than 140 character response. Oh, boy. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> but not really. We, we just ramble a little sure. bit. And then Sh- Sean tweezes out something that looks beautiful. He makes it real nice in post. Yeah. And, and we put everything in the show notes. They're called minimal maxims. So do you combat sadness differently as a musician? I mean, maybe that's a tool for... for uh, 
Kind of, as an artist, you indulge anyway on a certain level to all your emotional experiences. It's sort of, it's one of the fun parts of being an artist is that my job is to indulge. Mm -hmm. And so when sadness shows up, uh, I, I, it's You're just, like, all right, let's yeah, be sad. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> like, let's dig in. And, uh, and my kid who's eight does the same thing. And I think, I think, you know, she has an artistic, she feels things in a very big way. Um, hmm. but, but, uh, the, what was the question? Oh, Michelle. The question, yeah, Michelle. So living, in, it's, I mean, being asked being, to being you, Matt. Creative, or yeah. are you, are you combating sadness differently as a creative than, than you think a lot of other people do? No. Because you're, because you're able to sort of sit with it. I think other people, maybe that's the takeaway here is, uh, as opposed to distracting ourselves, which I think is what, feel it. yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. that, that's part of it. It doesn't mean you have to continue to suffer and, and hold on to the sadness. Well, this, yeah, and this is what you're saying is like, uh, it's the idea of this. You're experiencing what you're experiencing. So if I drop a brick on my penis, that's going to hurt. <laughs> But well, then it depends if what you're into, right? right? Oh, well, it, it's gonna hurt. I still could like it, but it would hurt. So I do that, and then, but if in a week from now I decide to relive what it felt like to drop a brick on my penis, I'm wasting my time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just want to drop it on there, feel it, and be like, "This is what it feels like to drop a brick on my penis. Does it hurt? Am I sad? Do I want to cry?" And then you move through it. But if I, I'd be an asshole if every day of my life I relived dropping a brick on my penis yeah. because it would gobble up my entire it's a waste it's a waste of yeah. your life and so sadness and happiness are the same thing you have to be in it and if something makes mm. you sad experience it and then move through it if something makes you happy experience it and then move through it and then experience what the universe wants to give you as opposed to the stuff you're dragging forward from the stuff that has happened mm. yeah like, I love that mm. I think we just found our, our trailer for this episode <laughs> dude sad, to me like sadness is inevitable like it's not about avoiding sadness it's about uh well i mean like here's a pithy answer i got written down it's if we live overwhelming lives it doesn't take much for us to feel like we've lost control so you know whether you're being a minimalist or a musician if you're living an overwhelming life even happiness might overwhelm you when it comes at you when you're not ready for it or if you're not prepared to deal with a, a large emotion like that but you know this idea of how do you you know how do you avoid sadness like that's that's impossible like I, you know, I hate to say it, but one day you're gonna die, man. Mm -hmm. I hope it's. Dude, I hope we're it's all dying. Yeah, I hope. How I, great is that? I hope it's after. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's true. Like I hope it's after I die. But if I gotta witness your death, <laughs> it's gonna be really, really sad, man. And it's not a. It's not about trying to avoid sadness as a whole. It's. It's how am I living my life now? So when these things happen. Uh, how can I process it? But it can also be awesome when he dies. That's, and I don't yeah, mean this in it. Like, I'm saying, like, because you guys try are buddies, <laughs> and it's like you love him, and it's an opportunity for you to, like, indulge in... There's a very acute feeling when someone passes where... Uh, where it, and you don't get it any other way. And all of a sudden, you just feel this unbelievable sense of, like, love and connection to this person and you're so fucking grateful that they existed mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the world for however long it lasts the, the the roof of the world cracks open and you just feel this incredible thing so it's like and it's in conjunction with what it can be in conjunction with anger it can be in conjunction with sadness it can be all that stuff this is the thing is like all that we can't be afraid of those experiences because that is the one thing that we've got is like to be able to to take on all those things to be resilient enough to do it and to be able to like experience every dynamic part of it yeah it's like it's the beauty beauty of being a human yeah. it's the beauty of the brain mm. because animals don't you know it's like it's the, uh, the the brain is a tool that gets used very very uh, not very often but it is the thing <laughs> that allows us to feel things on this dynamic level, yeah. and we're cheating ourselves if we don't. Yeah, yeah I feel like we're, we're often bludgeoning ourselves with with our own brains. You know, it, and I've I've learned this especially through through meditation. It, it, just realizing that everything here is just sort of appearing. Every emotion is 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 appearing, and it's gotten to a point where you can sit with it. You can sit with the sadness. You can sit, like you said, you talked about being overwhelmed by happiness. Like that is a thing. Um, Tennessee Williams wrote, wrote an essay called um, uh, uh, The Catastrophe of Success. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. And um, it, what it reminds me of is that 
you know, we, we we often get what we want. Before we started recording, actually, we, we were we were talking about like the venues that we've played in, and I say us play. We haven't. We don't play a damn <laughs> we're playing thing. Playing instruments. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but and, and Matt, you know, you, you'll go to places that are truly iconic places, but they're iconic because they're sort of this piece of mythology. We've all collectively as a, as a society turned it into this. Um, well, we put it on a pedestal because it has a particular name. But if you change the name of Madison Square Garden and moved it two states over or moved it to Connecticut or something, and it was the same venue, but it was brand new, you'd be like, well, wait a minute. This is this is a different thing. Because it's just wood and steel. And it's like, it, it, and but that's also what's so freeing about it mm. is like you can, it can be whatever you want it to be. Like you can go in there and feel it as if it, I can't believe you two did like, I can't believe Billy Joel does eight night. What I'm standing in the spot where probably Bono stood during the, you know, you can do that. Yeah. And that's the, that you can bring that to that. Or you can go in and you can be like, this is, there's nothing attached to this place. This is just a stage. I'm going to own this and I'm going to make this mine. And then th you can do that yeah. or you can go in and be like, what a shithole. Right. These yeah. people are assholes. And it's like all of that is totally wide open to you. Mm. And and then your experience is then based on whatever combination of those things you want to do. And most people believe we've been taught in a very strange way by consumerism and all this capitalism and, and is that if you're not feeling put upon you're not doing it right if you're not feeling the weight of your day if you're not feeling the frustration of your traffic like you're not doing it right and like traffic can be fucking awesome yeah you know what i mean like you it, it, it if you plan and you realize that you your bandwidth gives you if you give yourself space everything is really fucking awesome awesome yeah like it, it just is and, and i'm not a positive person i'm not a happy i mean i came from the like sub ha unhappy on a level that i don't think you know like we've probably all experienced but like the, yeah, but massachusetts I, unhappy yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is a strong kind of unhappy dude that is that is generations of uh that, it started with pushing the british out of lexington oh. and then being then watching our you know and being like i'm gonna be unhappy for about 300 years <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and so anyway, but but that's it. That's really the f that's is not very pithy, but that's the that's the thing. No, it's it's. I totally agree, man. It's like perception is everything. It's funny, like growing up, I always heard we create our own reality, and I looked at it as like a hippy dippy type of saying. But it's the truth, man. It's like everything you said about Madison Square Gardens is true. Yeah, you get to choose like yes. what story you tell yourself. Yes, yeah. and that's and. And it doesn't. And the other thing is that if you decide to look at it as a shithole because you're a little bit sick or you haven't eaten, your blood sugar is in a certain way, you haven't exercised, you haven't stretched your hip flexors and it's hurting, then that's okay too. Like you're allowed mm -hmm. to go into Madison Square Garden and be pissed that the fucking loaders don't talk to you. Right. Like you're allowed to feel all of that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but what are you going to do in your routine during the day that's going to set you up for success the best way it can? If it means getting up, exercising, eating food, journaling. you These are the things you control. Mm -hmm. You can create a, ha a set of habits, you guys have talked about this, but a set, set of habits mm -hmm. that allow you to set yourself up for as much success as you can. I know if I don't have breakfast, I know if I don't exercise, that like after a certain amount of time, like s nothing is good. Right. And so it's like every day you just have to sort of know yourself enough and critically think enough to set up uh, just a few simple things that make you feel like, okay, I can handle, I can bring it on. I've got it. I've got the bandwidth. I'm ready to ride the roller coaster of this day, wherever it's going to take me. And sometimes I'll fall off and want to punch somebody at Starbucks. And sometimes I'll be like, I love this person. Like how rad is it that that kid and that adult are talking and how great is it that humans get to be together in this mm -hmm. life and you can teach people and there's this exchange of energy. All that stuff happens, man. Yeah, absolutely. I, the, th the thing that really stood out to me is that you're, you're allowed to, to feel that. You know, you're allowed to, you're allowed to feel just angry at, at the world but also you don't have to, I think is ultimately what the message that, that you're communicating here is like, yeah, you can, you can experience it, but you don't have to cling to it. And sometimes we cling to it and then that, that leads to the road rage and traffic. Or it becomes our identity, which mm. is the other thing, right? You've talked about this as I, well. I'm the anxious person. Yes, right? I'm, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I'm the guy that likes to snap. I get pissed <laughs> off when be, I'm that guy from Boston. Like my wife doesn't let me drive. Like she does not let me drive. <laughs> my kid wrote to Santa Claus on the note 
dear Santa, I said, put some stuff that you're psyched on too. You can't just ask for shit. And she's like, I'm grateful that my mother drives and my dad doesn't because he's terrible. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I was like, well done. I said, I said, Santa, if he's any, if he's intuitive at all, he's going to know exactly what you're talking about. That's great. But like, you can't let your identity be that thing. Right. And it's like, and you also have to allow yourself, if you want to be in your car yelling about something, this is the other problem with humans. And, and I'm sorry to keep rambling, but this idea that we live in a time where everybody feels expulsive and everybody feels like their opinion needs to be heard mm -hmm. on. So if I'm having an experience, you have to, uh, someone's, uh, 15 people are going to tell me their interpret how they feel about my experience. They're going to either validate or unvalidate mm. my experience, which is something I don't want anybody to fucking do. Mm. I don't give a shit how much, what you think about anything. If I tell you something about myself and I share it with you and then you have to then tell me, project onto me and push down how I feel, it's like, go fuck yourself. I don't care what you think about how I feel. Yeah. But here's the deal. You have to allow yourself moments in the day to indulge in go fuck yourself like like if you want to be in your car and you want to be mad about but something not other but not you but you're not hurting other people and you're not hurting yourself but you have to be able to give yourself that exercise uh -huh. of being like of screaming at the television if for 20 minutes if you feel like you want to be so mad that the president of the united states has no empathy and kindness and you want to like yell at the tv about it like that's healthy you should be able to do that mm -hmm. but then getting on on Insta uh, on like Facebook for three hours and telling people how shitty they are is like that is not a good use of your time no. nor is it something that's going to do anything other than feed that habit in a in, in, in a bad way yeah. yeah and I definitely want to talk about how social media leads to, to sadness we have a bunch more surprise questions here about becoming an overnight success and Matt you did that after 15 years oh yeah uh -huh. um, <laughs> about dealing with despair loss and sadness I've got 21 ways to deal with sadness apparently we're gonna we're gonna break this down and I'm going to see, I question some of these 21 ways, <laughs> and I want to see what your guys' take are on all 21 ways. Uh, we've got a question about being too busy to appreciate the little victories. See what I did there? Yeah, I like the way you <laughs> did that. Uh, also, um, I want to talk to Matt about sort of, uh, not the conventional, hey, what inspired you? Is living in San Francisco? Yeah, no, we're not going to do that, but I do want to talk about some of your lyrics. Uh, and and I don't want you to explain lyrics, because that's like explaining jokes, but I, I, what I'm going to do is, is is maybe unpack them a little bit and see what I what I see happening to the right of the frame. And we, <laughs> the we worst can talk is when those. I like ask a musician about their lyrics and it has nothing to do with what I thought they were about, the and best. it just ruins it for me. So I don't it, I don't ask anymore. No, I don't, and I don't try not to tell. I <laughs> yeah, try not yeah. to tell because it's like you want to. It's your thing. It's like right. the song is yours. You know it's what a, I mean? It's the the Jason Mraz thing, right? I wrote the song about my cat, right. and then like <laughs> yeah. it was like this deep love song, like you and I together, and it's like it it's totally so ruins awesome. the, the whole thing. You You're like and I have hairballs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're going to talk about how social media leads to sadness as well. So, so a bunch of things to talk about. And if you want to hear all that, you can listen to this week's Maximal episode available exclusively on Patreon. That's right. You're currently listening to our weekly Minimal episode. But each week, Ryan and I record an entirely different long-form Maximal episode over on The Minimalist's private podcast, which gives us the private space we need to talk about a whole bunch of topics that we don't usually discuss in public. Plus, Patreon is the best way for us to fund this podcast and keep it 100% advertisement free. When you subscribe to the Minimalist Private Podcast on Patreon, you'll receive a personal link so that our maximal episodes play in your favorite podcast app. You'll also get access to our entire back catalog of more than 100 private podcast episodes. You can find all the details and all the good stuff, including an additional private podcast episode every week over at theminimalists.com slash support. Ryan, what else you got for us this week? Being informed is more important than ever these days. So I just want to encourage everyone to read more and get informed. And now here are some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Hi, this is Scott from Kansas City listening to the podcast on hope. And your caller, John, who called in, said he'd gotten into minimalism and yet had not experienced the joy. Well, I would suggest... Minimalism has nothing to do with stuff. Minimalism is the first step in an unconscious rejection of the social contract that says stuff is the answer. Stuff at the answer of self, uh, at the expense of self, at the expense of identity, at the expense of dreams. So what John needs to do is recognize that stuff, getting rid of stuff only clears the deck and now he's free to put in the work to discover what he values, what he hopes for. The real goal is to discover yourself. 
My name's Susan, and I recently listened to your donations episode. And I just want to say that I work at a Goodwill as a job coach in the donations centers with adults with disabilities. And I super love my job. I love every, I love going to work every single day, and I love the people I work with. But one thing I've noticed that a lot of donors don't know about is that while Goodwill has like thousands of locations all across the nation, every Goodwill is run locally and specializes in different local issues. So the Goodwill in my town, we specialize in domestic violence victims and people with autism. But the next big city in in my state, they specialize with a lot of homeless populations and a lot of at-risk youth. So that's something that I would just recommend that everybody to, like, really look into your goodwill, like your local goodwill, because you can really see on how they create a lot of local change, and you can get involved in that, too. All right, y'all. Thanks again to Matt Nathanson for joining us today. Make sure you check out his new album, Sings His Sad Heart. And real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalists. We're taking a break from touring right now. Although Ryan and I, we did a a tour stop this year. Well, sort of, with our friend Colin. And kudos to Jordan. Jordan filmed an amazing event. Um, And Colin's talk was unbelievable. It was great. Yeah, we just released it for our true fans on on Patreon. So there's a group of people on on Patreon who are like this true fan tier. And you get access to all of our live events. So even if you can't attend the live event, we'll have either audio or video recordings where they allow it. And Jordan did an amazing job. Sean did a great job with the audio as well. So you can check that out over on Patreon. It's Colin's talk. And then we have a second video which is the three of us, me and Ryan and Colin, and uh, we did a Q&A with the audience. So you'll be able to check that out. So we're not touring for a while right now. We're working on some stuff, but if you'd like to see us live or at least live on your screen, that's one way for you to do it. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, leave us a voicemail, 406-219-7839, or send a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. You can comment on this episode at youtube.com slash theminimalists. If you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list over at theminimalists.com. You'll also receive our Simple Sunday emails each week. For our added value this week, let's listen to my favorite Matt Nathanson song. I think it's my favorite. It's my favorite today, at least. (laughs) It's the only song that's... uh, There are two songs that have ever made me cry. One was... uh, this song we're about to play it's it's called bill murray <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's got to be some irony in that somewhere it's such a good song and yeah. and it made me cry because i looked over at bex we were listening to it in the car and it's about like finding sort of love of your life or um i, I won't run it just listen to the song it's so so good this has nothing to do with the song uh-huh. but there is a group of people who get together and they just tell stories about how they've run into bill murray in public <laughs> I think it's in LA. Of course, it'd be in LA. <laughs> but like, it's like 20, 30 he, people. He lives in like South Carolina or something, though. Doesn't yeah, he? dude, it's wild. Like, yeah. it's like 20, 30 people. They get together and they literally just talk about instances where they've <laughs> met or ran into Bill Murray. Well, this is a beautiful song. It's called Bill Murray by Matt Nathanson. If you leave here today with just one message, we hope it's this love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. The Minimalists.